All right, everyone, it's time for Occult Literature, video number 121. This is an interesting work right here. Vriel, The Power of the Coming Race, uh, has nothing, by the way, to do with, like, racialism before anybody assumes that. Uh, about 182 pages in length. It's a full-length work. It's also fictional, but with reservations, I say that, and I'll have to get into the nitty-gritty here of that. Uh, as always, link in the description to my edition of this work on Amazon, a second link to my books blog. I am currently working on compiling ebook links, uh, so all of the works, uh, more or less, I think there are two or three works you won't be able to get as ebooks. Everything else, there'll be two links uh, for everything. I've also got to create the, the next category and switch around the folk magic category for mysticism. It's going to take a lot of work. It'll take several hours to do all of this. Uh, once and that's <laughs> after I actually get all of the links uh, ready. Now the story of Vriel, uh, released of course by Edward Bulwer Lytton, uh, is a fictional work on the surface. That is, it's similar to like Donnelly's Antediluvian World, uh, Tommaso City of the Sun. Some of these comparable utopian works. They speak of Atlantis or El Dorado. In this case, it's sort of the inner Earth stuff, sort of the Agartha. Uh, after a, a variant, the Edda Dwarfa. Some of these works are strictly fictional, but they're tinged by the occult, and they drove social consciousness thereafter. When we're talking about the story of Real, we're talking about a work that went on decades later to inform the rudiments of the eugenics movement. It certainly informed sort of the New Agey occultists of Blavatsky's era. She was familiar with this work as well as, of course, the antediluvian world. The idea at the time, I think, in general, is that human beings were going out into the strange parts of the world they hadn't fully explored. They finally had the full technology to penetrate deeper into the jungles, go further into the deserts, climb higher mountains, go into venture into the more polar regions. And I think that many people expected to find that lost continent or the city of gold or some god race or something. They didn't find it. So then they tried, they, they regressed into the early science fiction and, and the fantasy genres and started dreaming about these things as though they were real. And what ended up being informed were movements later on, and we're talking after the era of this specific work, uh, decades, half a century, in fact, later, where people were, you look at the art styles, the literary styles, the political movements and social movements of the era, we're talking through the 1910s into the 1950s, there's an emphasis on trying to overhaul the world and make it that sort of utopia. Uh, it comes from without the realm of science fiction. Now, the story of real here is essentially the protagonist. Uh, finds himself in the inner earth. Uh, I'm not going to give away too much of the plot because it's fiction. You're going to read this more for entertainment. If you're an occultist, you might be reading it for its important background uh, as far as some of the later occult movements, uh, certainly the theosophists drawing off of this sort of literature. Uh, but it's sort of like a tale of Agartha. It ends up in the inner earth. There are various strange things down there. Uh, I won't give away the ending because, again, uh, if you're interested in knowing the basic synopsis of the work, uh, you can always look that up, or you can just buy a copy and you can read it. It's actually very good. It was, it's one of those works where once I was done editing it, I went back and like read the whole thing. And I don't even like reading things in sort of the PDF, the ebook format uh, on a screen. I like to have a physical copy. So it's relatively uncommon for me to read it all the way through again, especially in a technological sense on a computer for entertainment purposes. But it's actually very well written. I, I would class it with like the antediluvian world. It has a lot of minutia, uh, a lot of sort of scene and character development. It, it ruminates more on the, the appearance and sort of things about the actual uh, things, the living things encountered as opposed to like the scenery. Uh, things like that. That's a little bit more sporadic, but you get the basic idea, and it's rather interesting. It's definitely a work of its era, though, uh, because instead of incredible technology, for the most part, it, it ruminates more on the what you would consider the vaguely magical side, uh, sort of enshrouded in the then modern conception of electricity, uh, so to speak, uh, with this vril, this uh, magical force 
or this cosmic force, rather, uh, that's being used for various purposes. So it's an excellent work. I highly recommend it just for entertainment purposes. No, but again, I want to remind people, this itself comes before eugenics. It comes before sort of those movements that stem off from it, although it does inform them. And for that purpose, it's one of the most socially relevant works, actually, ever written by a human being. Uh, it would be like the Antediluvian World or the Edda Dorfa. Some of these other works, you got to realize that that sort of style of sci-fi writing basically built the modern world. Almost, almost everything that's happened since that period of time has been built on the backs of such literature. And this literature was in turn informed uh, prior to that by a lot of the folk magic traditions and grimoires of yesteryear from the Renaissance. It's almost the birth of modern civilization was occultism. Uh, but you have to understand a, liter a little bit about literary history and about sort of the occult traditions that inform these works if you want to understand how indeed that functions. And it's still happening to this day. It's an ongoing, ever-present process. It will never stop. Just, just like organized religious dogma and how it influences the world. So yes, highly recommended. Link in the description to my edition on Amazon. Second link to my books blog. If you want the more fictional side, I will be releasing editions of like the Edda Dwarf and some of these other works over time. Uh, right now I've got a buckle down. I've got a couple of shorter works, one alchemical, one herbal. Uh, then make my category, slap all the ebook links in there. Finally, it will have a semi standard format. I will create as well a WordPress site in the future. I mean, as a stand in for before I have my own literal website uh, because I want to grow a little bit more to justify that. And, you know, different platforms and stuff have more content in general on more sites. Uh, before I create something linking it all together. I will create a WordPress site in the future, and the only purpose will be literally the, the categorical listings. It won't have any other updates or anything like the blog spot will. That's about all. Peace out.